Welcome to another episode of Life with Bev. This week we've come to this area, which, you know, it's just typical kind of woods, foresty type thing, with a bit of a stream that goes through it, and of course the obligatory piles of rubbish. There is always kind of worrying in a place like this, because you always have to sit here and wonder, shit, is that a body? For this part of the episode though, I'm going to be going down this way, somehow. Down these steps. Whoa. I'm getting caught in the trees. Oh, God. And by the time you do get down, you're probably not that busy to notice there's two mattresses in the water. People make me laugh, you know. The amount of times I've heard people saying, oh yeah, you live in a town and everyone calls it a shithole, but it's got really nice green areas. Well, yeah, you're seeing how green they actually are with the fucking mattresses and crap in here. Remember all the bastard titles. chopping back. Of course it doesn't help, I'm walking through all these bloody stinging plants that fucking hurt you in my fucking shorts. We were allegedly supposed to have some nice weather at some point today but that's not fucking turned out and I'm just in a grumpy mood anyway because I'm fucking tired. But there is the reason that I mainly come to these places because someone loves a good nose and a good run around <clears throat> and I know that he gets it here too. The area where I'm actually walking through now goes on to the shopping centre which is in the town that I live in and I need to nip there for a couple of minutes, a couple of bits and uh, and then I'll be walking back up to the wooded area. I mean you look around and you think there's plenty of greenery you know and the tall trees looking up to the sky and you know how amazing this place should be and everything like that. Then see what you find. This is what I call the river of fake tan. Look at this. Pretty disgusting, isn't it? Someone doesn't seem to mind. How great is nature? So it's time for us to leave the rivers of Tanilon. <laughs> God, I'm funny. And uh, start heading up towards the wooded area, which is a little bit up here. There is also something quite interesting that I've been reading about over the past couple of weeks, and I think I might have actually just seen it in person for myself. I can't actually remember the name of the plant, but there is a plant that seems to be growing in British wildlife at the minute, which, uh, if it comes into contact with human skin, basically causes like these great big rashes and burns, and like just basically tries to kill you, which is all that nature actually wants to do anyway. I've seen sort of pictures of what these things look like, and yet I've come to this bit, and it's all like been killed off. Now with the uh, tops of the twigs things looking like that, I'm actually tempted to think that might be the plant that they were on about. I mean, it actually wouldn't surprise me in this town that there's something out there in the wild to try and kill you. I mean, you have to look at half the houses and the people in there want to kill you. Not that everywhere in this town is a shithole. There are some nice areas, they're called the exits. I mean, look at that. Fucking tons of crap there too. This is disgusting. So we go up these steps. And as you can see, Dogalog there is ready to go on his run. Trey does love his runs around areas like this. There's the uh, top bit of the stream. That bit I showed you before, where the, the water was falling down. This is what feeds it, allegedly. But uh, as you can see, there's not much movement down there today. So I wonder where that water is actually coming from. Now we're coming up to the area where he'll go off by himself. 
and I have to go off by myself. We call this little bit the waiting area because I literally walk up to this bit and wait. He'll go off for about 10 minutes, maybe even 15 minutes by himself. He always comes back. I think he's had it drilled into him since he was a puppy that uh, he should like sort of come back to his humans every now and then just make sure that they're okay and obviously it's a little bit of a check-in for us to check that he's actually okay and he loves this area <laughs> like there is hills there is big trees there is shrubbery there is just loads for him to run around and go and sniff and go and have a wee on things and oh he does he loves it and as you can see from that bit this is when I just stand here and Listen to the birds tweeting. Which actually I guess is not too much of a bad thing when this is your view. You know what I mean? You can hear that he's over there. You can see the plants moving. <laughs> you just can't see him. Oh, he's back out now. He's on. He's on a path. This will be him coming along now. There he is. <laughs> I always think it's important for animals to be able to explore and go and do what they want and go and see the things that they want to because if I was an animal I wouldn't like to be kept on a lead all the time. There is something that I've bought recently which I don't think Trey's too impressed with which is a uh, travelling cage for him. It's not too bad and he's been in it before and to be honest with you it's actually a little bit of a godsend because we had a thing where he he loves going travelling in the car, he really does because I think he understands that when he's going travelling in the car he's actually going to good places like the beach and whatnot and uh, he used to have a habit of like jumping up at the windows so you'd have all snot marks across the windows you'd have scratches on the back door everything like that and this sort of coincides with my boyfriend getting a new car because uh, he said I don't want the new car getting trashed like the old one so we got him the new cage and we tried him out in it on uh, when was it it's early uh, well a couple of weeks ago now and um yeah, he's taken to it actually quite well. He doesn't sit there and whimper like he used to. Um, it's got little windows on it, so he can look out if he wants to. Um, or you can just fold the flaps down like I've done, and it actually shuts him up. He just goes for a bit of a lie down. It's got a little uh, sheepskin thing on the inside, so it's actually really nice. I've crawled in and managed to get it just to cover my ass, like from head to ass, and that was it. That's all I can fit in. It's a fucking huge thing, though. This is what I mean, though. Like, he's, he's gone missing already, and uh, yeah, I don't think he'll be coming back for another couple of minutes yet, so this is what I have to listen to. Oh dear, I've seen him. And he's seen me. He's down there somewhere. There you are, you can see him a little bit. There's my boy. <laughs> Have another good little sniff round down there. This is what I mean though, he'll start coming back in a minute. And uh, 
come and see that I'm okay and whatnot. Quite a peaceful sound in though. And obviously it's quite nice to look at as well when there's not piles of crap around here. Here he is coming back round. There we go. I've got something quite special lined up for you guys next week so hopefully you'll enjoy it and uh, me and the dogalog are going to start heading off and uh, yeah I'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>